Running the desk now is Fox Sports NFL analyst and another wide receiver. Yeah. It's gone way too long. <laughs> Jenny, welcome back. My dog. Marcellus, I'll start with you. Uh-huh. Mistake for Gruden to embrace AB's drama. Not a mistake at all. The smart play right here. If you talk about all this drama, whatever you want to define that as. Hot air balloon. Okay. You know what that, that hot air balloon or let's go before the helicopter ride and all the other antics came with? Production, brother. I mean, real life production. So it wasn't just a guy who's out here making noise, but there was a signal in there that <laughs> I'm going to actually set this thing on fire from hello and I won't stop till I get off this grass. And his work ethic, second to none. Uh, his production, second to none. And last year, I think that was an anomaly in terms of his character and what he was facing. Let me be real. In that locker room, A.B., before last year, was a guy who's like, I qualify to be at Tier 1. Ben Roethlisberger obviously qualifies to be at Tier 1. And Ben, you start calling me out. Respect, brother. Just respect me and my game. You don't have to call me out. We could talk about this off mic, off radio shows, etc. But Ben went there. And then I think A.B. took the patient approach for a long time. Y'all going to check this dude? Because if not, I got to check him. And then that's where things went awry. All I'm saying is John Gruden is smart. John Gruden is not a punk. Ask Keyshawn Johnson about how John Gruden gets down with these receivers if they get out of line. Send him home. Say, we'll pay you. Bye-bye. So John Gruden knows he has that in his back pocket. But right now, let's smile. Let's win him over with some honey before we got to show him that vinegar. Yeah, I'm with you, Marcellus. I, I think this is a smart decision John Gruden is making. You embrace it because, number one, you went out to get it. Mm. So if you go get it, <laughs> that means you know what you're in for. And, and maybe he doesn't know the totality of what yeah. he's in for, um, but you, you bring up some interesting points. And, and I want to touch on his it. relationship with Ben Roethlisberger and the Pittsburgh Steelers and how that kind of spiraled. At some point, you get tired of being the quiet one, of allowing things to just kind of go, just go. A.B. was quiet. Yes. He was. Yes, when it yeah. comes to, when, when you feel like you're on the same level as now your quarterback and your production tells me that, look, my production over my drama any day of the week, mm -hmm. you take it, you know what I am, you know what I provide this team, but yet no one's really holding you accountable for the things that you may have said, for the things that you aren't doing <laughs> uh, behind closed doors, that becomes an issue. And when you do get paid and you feel like, okay, now I have some more leverage, I have some say, you're going to start saying the things that other guys aren't saying because you want to know what, how it goes in the locker room? The guy with the most money and the guy with the most pool, everybody in the locker room saying, man, you need to say something, Say man. something. <laughs> say something, man. Yep. You're the only one that can say something to Ben. You're the only one that can say something to Tomlin and he'll right. listen. So that, that's in his ear. So then he says something, and then it's all on him. Well, he's really being the voice that everybody else doesn't have, but they're living vicariously through his actions and what he's saying. And so I think with John Gruden, he's going to be great because he's the biggest antic. He's the biggest showman. Mm. It's all about him, and he's going to love the way he works. As long as that production, you hit it, the nail on the head, as long as that production still stays there, I'll take the drama. So just remember that part of the drama is, like, A.B. not showing <clears throat> up on a Saturday before a game, A.B. being late to everything. And so what John Gruden has done, and it's appropriate you're wearing a green jacket, is he's waved a green flag. A.B., <laughs> do A.B. Go. Whatever you want to do, I'm going to uh, justify it. I'm going to rationalize it. He has set, he's set loose, A.B., to do whatever he wants, and the, re the rest of those guys are going to follow. Because, as y'all know, whether the production backs it up, 60% of that locker room feel, man, I'm just as good as him. All I need is the opportunity. Who? Where? 60% of Think the locker room. Think as good as A.B.? Yes. When? <laughs> Given the opportunity, well, I'm, I'm with you there. All pro six times. I'm, I'm, I'm with them there. Guys think that they're better they than they, they are. They think they're AB. They, yes, I, they might think they're there's even levels better. to this. But I'm gonna let y'all. <laughs> I'm with. I understand. What? But what he's saying is it's true. We have confidence, but we ain't God. stupid. You're right, but guys think that they're better than I, what they are I, I, look, because of the lack of opportunities. Yeah. Yes. And, and mm. AB if gets I those. I was them. treated that way. I'm I could do that. But you know what's yeah. weird about this treatment? It is such a short shelf life in terms of how long he was an issue in Pittsburgh. 
Look, when you say he's being late to the meetings, when you say that A.B. is missing Saturday, that's when the cat's out the bag. As you said, this dude took the high road yes. for so long. And look, you can own a house on the high road, but you're, you're going to rent that apartment on the low road, right? Every now and then, you got to go down there and remind them, bruh, I'm only doing this because I'm trying to be a team player. And that's what A.B. got caught up in. He got caught up in finally, you guys are not going to fix this, I'll fix this, and it's going to be a problem. But, Marcel, you know, we all know, the things you get caught for just mask all the things you got away with. Yeah, know it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, again, yeah. they went public with what A.B. was doing after it was like, man, we've we been eating a lot of... Doo doo. Yeah, we, we, that's <laughs> the bet on the quarterback. All that is is look. We got to pick one. We gonna bet on the quarterback. You you, you got to bet on your franchise quarterback over your wide receiver who you can paint in this. But way. I'm saying A. B. was causing a lot of problems in Pittsburgh that we never heard about. It was tolerated. They were winning. He was so productive. It hadn't turned into a hot mess where he and Ben were at each other's throats. Juju hadn't arrived as a productive player that set him off even ben more. Ben wasn't calling him out on the radio show, throwing no, the ball to D. Lyman. No, no question. <laughs> but, but I'm just saying, we know that we've just heard a little tiny tidbit. Again, I go back to my boy Jesse Washington at the Undefeated that wrote a whole expose on all the crap A.B.'s doing off the field, all the disputes with all kinds of people that, that paints a pretty clear picture. This dude is off the chain. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm, not, I'm not here to defend Antonio Brown, and, and, and neither is that my, my role in mm. this. Yep. But you talk about everything that we heard about Antonio Brown and everything that came out. Think about the things that we've heard about Big Ben. The things that happened in the I'm locker room. Him, that, you, we're not, but the things that happened in that locker room that Antonio Brown saw every single day and had to deal with every single day. Mm. We're not talking about that. We're talking about we, the decisions that he decided to make that all of a sudden blew up the relationship between he, Mike Tomlin, and Big Ben Roethlisberger in that dynamic Big Ben or Triple Bs or whatever they call them. You're right. It's because he said, you know what, I'm tired. I'm not doing it anymore. Ah. And it's because his production, he felt like, I'm entitled to just say what I want to say. I qualify. If you're not going to do it, then somebody has to do it. There will be a new Big Ben in Oakland. And it may be the head coach. John Gruden may be the Big Ben that A.B. looks over and goes, I don't like some of the stuff you do. Some of the stuff you say is inconsistent. There's a laundry list of former NFL players that say when John Gruden's mouth is moving, he's probably not telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Long list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard A.B. is going to is going to be in that locker room listening to this. And, go, and then it may be John Gruden that triggers. Not Big Ben. It may be John Gruden that triggers A.B. And, and I believe it will be because John Gruden, again, he's going with this very immature approach. I'm like, We're going to embrace him. Mm. We're going to kill him with kindness and love. The Pittsburgh Steelers <laughs> have been killing him with kindness and love. And that's how it got so far out of control and out of pocket. A.B., this is, I, I wouldn't say a tough love approach is the right one because I would not challenge A.B. to a fight, particularly after I just gave him a new contract. But I certainly wouldn't sit up in front of everybody, man, I can't wait for the drama. The drama's going to be just what this team needs. The, the, uh, you know, I, I thought there would be more. I can't believe he just went with a hot air balloon. When, when A.B. starts flying stealth bombers over the practice <laughs> facility... <laughs> <laughs> and, and, on, and, and jumping out of them, parachute. I th you told me you wanted me to parachute to practice. He's capable. But, you know, the, the thing is, a guy played nine years, and we never before last year would bring up A.B. in this light. Not fully. We would say, oh, this incident here, you this, this, read, twerking. Man. Look, look it, I'm going to send you the article. No, I read the article, and it <laughs> mm -hmm. took an article to bring all that up because you know what was living on the front page in our minds? Ben Roethlisberger and everybody else's issues hitting you directly. And this is a guy who's been productive since his second year in the league. So don't act like he's not had this confidence. But what was brewing is his qualifications and him getting paid, like you said. When you get paid in that locker room, oh, you become the ambassador for the voiceless. Yes. And all those people who feel powerless, all the mother 50 guys in there, hey, bro, go handle that, man. Go on and set this straight. Balance the equation. And when he did it, 
He did it too much. He went six gear instead of measuring it. And also, it got off the rails. That said, John Gruden has dealt with this type of personality before. And keep Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. And be sure to check out more of the best clips from Speak For Yourself or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.